today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about things you might be forgetting to clean. Do you do a fall cleaning each year, but wondering what you might be leaving out? When was the last time you cleaned your reusable bags? Could you be spreading bacteria when you don't clean these items regularly? Learn tips for cleaning things you might have forgotten about as we begin our month focusing on fall. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach Julie Caraccio on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas – physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. Today's episode was inspired by my reusable bags. I go everywhere with these things. I keep them in the car. I now have Tony keeping one in his car. And a couple weeks ago, I dropped the bag and there was a glass jar of salsa. Now I'd have to admit my first instinct was clean it up and we can reuse the bag. And my husband was like, nope, taking it right trash. And he was right. We could have had glass shards in there and you know, wouldn't want the cat stepping on it, wouldn't want us getting on it because I or been cut by it because I would have gone out to the deck out back and washed it out and, and the cat spent time out there. So he was right. And then Joey, our elderly clad, who has some some challenges, did a poop bomb on another reusable bag. Now don't worry guys, I didn't even hesitate on this, took it right out of the trash. I just chucked it. I try to be green where possible, but safe when I need to and not disgusting. Today's episode was also inspired by my mom because she is so great about cleaning spring and fall and doing things on a regular basis. She is old school. She has silver. She polishes it twice a year, and she taught me a lot that I know. And then finally, today's episode is inspired because if you keep things in good shape, they last longer. My husband is fantastic about this. Me, not so much and working to improve. The list that I'm sharing today will help me as much as it helps you. Here are 15 items I'm going to share today. I had a lot of fun with this, so I'm thinking that I'm going to do one again in the spring. Share your favorites with me that people might not think to clean on social media, and if I use yours, I'll mention your name and where you live if you choose. All right, number one, right off the top, reusable bag. They can get gunky. You don't want germy stuff hanging out with your food. Now, some bags you can wash, meaning you can throw in the washer. I would air dry any bag. I am a fan of the drying rack. You can also rinse and wash out. For instance, I use a little bit of laundry detergent or dishwashing liquid, whatever I have handy. And again, I like to do my cleaning when I do the cat litter and do that out on the back deck. I can sit, get it clean, use a hose. And then I like to air dry things. Everything just seems to be so much better when you dry it in the sun. Number two, I want you going through your hobbies. Are you a painter? Do you make soap? Use essential oils to create things? When was the last time you went through and not only decluttered them, but gave everything a good clean? For instance, in my essential oils, I have a little container that has, it's circular, so you can boom, 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 put all your oils on, and, and I label them at the top so I can see what they are. So I'm talking about taking out all your oils, dusting them off, and mine has a little thing that flips up off, like the little where you put them in. So I would take that out, dust in the box, dust between. If you're a painter, when is the last time you cleaned your brushes? you're doing on a regular basis or whatever can, boxes or bins that you have to carry everything. When's the last time you gave that a good dust or scrub? Take the time to clean all those little things. Your refrigerator and dryer vent. This is number three. 
you want to make sure you sweep the coils behind the fridge and clear out your dryer vent. And I'm not talking about the, you should always, after every drying load, pull out the little vent. I'm talking about the vent that connects, that goes out your house, dryer vent. I have learned from research that the dryer vent can cause a fire. I haven't heard of any challenges with the coils causing a fire on the back of the fridge. However, if your coils are clean, your refrigerator is going to be more efficient and that's going to help your bill and be better for the environment. It'll have your fridge running at optimum. So take the time to clean those. I also know if you don't want to clean, there are people who come and do your air ducts, your dryer vent, they will clean that for you. Samples. Where are all your samples tucked away? Might be food samples, beauty samples, perhaps you were given a yarn sample or a button, maybe samples for pet food, such as cat food or a new cleaner to try. If they haven't expired, use them. If they've been around a while and you aren't going to use them and they're still good, see if someone else can use, like giving your beauty samples to your girlfriend. Number five, computer desktop clutter. Number five, ice cube trays. When is the last time that you cleaned those? I would take them out. I would let them thaw. I would use hot, hot water. Use dish detergent, whatever liquid soap you have hanging out at your sink. Clean them really well. Let them air dry. And then make sure that they are clean. And again, I do another rinsing. Um, especially with something where you're going to put water in, I'd prefer to do another rinse. And if you, depending on the material, you can just throw them in the dishwasher, which is the easiest solution if you're able to do that. But have you ever tasted something you're like, hmm, the ice has like kind of a funky taste. So make sure you are cleaning those. And if you don't have ice trays and you're, we don't have ice trays because we have an ice maker, make sure that you're clearing the ice maker. From homeguides.com, here's how to sanitize the ice maker. Lift up the ice maker power bar. This automatically lifts when your ice bin is full and it stops the machine from making more ice until the bar drop. If your ice maker doesn't have one, feel on the back of the machine for an on off switch and turn it off. If you aren't sure if the unit is deactivated, you're probably gonna wanna unplug your fridge. Now I know in ours, it's just a simple on off button that you can see boom right there. You don't have to search for it. Next, you're gonna to want to take out the ice bin. Most easily slide out like one of your shelves might. Others might need you to lift up a little bit and pull out. Dump the ice into the sink and you can break up large chunks or just let it melt because you're gonna be cleaning anyway. You're going to want to fill your sink with warm water and liquid dishwashing detergent. Dip a rag in the soapy water and wipe down the ice maker unit inside the freezer. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use a dry rag to remove any water and soap left on the machine. Wash your ice storage bin in the soapy water and rinse it well. Before you can sanitize the ice maker, you need to clean it. Next, you're gonna to wanna to mix a half a cup of bleach in a gallon of water. Dip a rag in the mixture and wipe down the ice maker inside the freezer. Wipe the unit with a dry rag to remove the moisture. Wash the storage bin with the mixture as well, rinsing it thoroughly. Again, I'm gonna probably do a rinse or two more because bleach is being used. Place the ice storage bin in the dishwasher and run it on a sanitizing cycle if the bin is dishwasher safe. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you check that. You know I'm a fan of manualsonline.com. If you have let go of your refrigerator manual, you should be able to find instructions there. The bin may say whether it's safe to use in the dishwasher on the bottom of the bin, or you can check your owner manual. Dry the bin completely with a rag. Wipe the ice maker unit and storage bin one more time with a dry rag to ensure there is no standing water. Any remaining water could freeze, keeping the unit from operating properly 
or cracking the storage bin. Put the storage bin back and the ice maker unit back on. Number six, iPad, cell phone, tablet, computer. When is the last time you wiped any of these down? How about your keyboard and mouse? There are tools you can use to get into crevices, such as a keyboard, in case you eat at your desk. Of course, I would never eat at my desk while working. The air duster is great for this. Give everything a good clean. For your screens, you're never going to want to use a cleaning solvent like Windex or something similar. Use only water. Ideally, use water with a lint-free scratch-resistant cloth. Microfiber is best. To clean your iPad screen or your computer, or your tablet, or your cell phone, dampen the cloth slightly, then clean the screen using soft, even strokes. Lose a client because you couldn't find the contact information of the person who was interested in your services? Did you double book speaking engagements and now have to figure out which one to cancel? Were you late to a client because you didn't have the address or directions? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. On the same topic, when was the last time you cleaned your earbuds or headphones? I have hearing aids and I need to clean these regularly because of wax buildup. I have tools for my hearing aids that I bet you could buy for your earbuds although hearing aids are a little bit different. Here's what cleanmyspace.com suggests. Start by gently dry brushing the wax out of the earbud. Hold them with the mesh facing down so that any debris can fall down as opposed to going back into your earbud. You wanna make sure you don't press too hard because you don't wanna push the gunk in any further. If there's still wax, dip a Q-tip in rubbing alcohol Tap it off, and then wipe the bud to remove anything remaining. Take an alcohol wipe and wipe the earbud and surrounding area. This can mildly clean as well as disinfect the earbud. Rubbing alcohol dries fast and won't seep into the bud. Number eight, another one for technology. Your TV remote and game controllers. They might have dried food or lots of fingerprints. You're gonna to wanna to definitely clean those. First, remove the batteries from your remote or your game controller. Dip a cotton cloth into rubbing alcohol and wipe down the entire surface. You can then use an alcohol-soaked Q-tip to carefully clean around the buttons. If there's grime inside the buttons, use a toothpick to remove it. Number nine, light switch plates. When was the last time that you cleaned those? We're working on getting our house on the market, and I told the realtor to look at the upgrades Tony got in the kitchen and the bathroom. I personally would have cheaped out on those. You'll have to look at what the material that your light switch plate is made of. Depending on what it is, it might be grimy and have a lot of fingerprints that are really visible. I'm going to suggest using regular household cleaner or rubbing alcohol, that's really great because it dries quickly, on a paper towel or a microfiber cloth. We have those that we can throw in the wash when we're finished. You don't want to spray the cleaner directly on the plate. You're going to want to put it on the cloth or the paper towel, and then you're going to wipe down the surface. Use a Q tip to clean the actual switch of the fixture, and then you can. Dust it, buff it well with a dry cloth. If you're kind of busy, you can also use a disinfecting wipe to wipe down the light plates as well. Next, sponges. This is something that can get junked up and have loads of bacteria. And I bet you use yours every single day. I know we do in the kitchen. I Googled for the experts and found an article from NPR 
in September 2017 by Michaeline Duclef. It was in the salt section of NPR. The experts say to one, keep sponges away from raw meat. If you're dealing with raw juices, use a paper towel that you can throw away. Number two, don't keep sponges around for too long. Experts recommend one to two weeks. And then finally, clean the sponge every few days. The USDA recommends putting it in the dishwasher with a heated dry cycle or wetting the sponge and popping it into the microwave just for about a minute. Toss them out when you need to. I try to be green as possible, but safety always has to come first. Next, while we're still in the kitchen, wooden cutting boards. Plastic's pretty easy because we can put them in water in the sink and usually run those in the dishwasher. But you don't want to do that with a wooden cutting board. I went to the experts at cuttingboard.com for this information. To clean, use hot water, a sponge, and a light amount of soap and scrub off any foods and fluids. Science shows that in cleaning, the volume of water matters more than anything as it washes away bacteria and particles, so make sure you run it under lots of water and especially on scarred sections that are good at trapping food particles. Next, disinfect. Use either pure white vinegar or a mixture of two tablespoons of chlorine bleach in a gallon of water. Note that any vinegar other than pure white vinegar may make your board smell. Soak a cloth in the solution and then wipe the board down thoroughly with the wet cloth. I use vinegar because again, I'm just a weirdo about bleach. It's gonna touch food. I just don't want bleach near me. If your board has any sour or mold-like smell, you can also put a cup of baking powder onto the board and pour a cup of white vinegar over the board. You could also cut lemons in half and rub the board down with the sides of the lemon. Let it sit a few minutes before rinsing off. Another suggestion on Google suggested throwing salt on the lemon as well. Finally, the most important is to wipe dry. It's important for maintaining your cutting board as water permeating the wood is what causes the wood fibers to swell and then warp your board. This is why you should never soak your cutting board in water and never put it in the dishwasher. It's always good practice after your board is dried to rub mineral oil onto your board. This is what my mother taught me and it's what I do. Do not use other organic oils as the fats in those oils can and will spoil turning rancid and causing your cutting board to stink. One of the few natural oils that you can use is coconut oil, which will not go rancid for some time, but it is not immune to eventually spoiling. I can speak to that. Coconut oil will spoil. Oils work by occupying the space in the wood fibers and preventing water from entering your board and causing cracks and split. These little crevices are where bacteria love to hide and multiply, so preventing your board from having small fractures is key to keeping your cutting board sanitary. Number 12, your mop. When was the last time you cleaned the old mop head? I know those swifter things are probably more popular, but they also create a lot more trash. You'll probably wanna clean the mop head in hot water and bleach, but take the time to rinse it until the water is clean as you run it through the mop head before you put it in a bucket of bleach. Toothbrush holder. This is a good one. I need to run and go do this. Rinse it out well and give it a good scrub. Most probably can't go in the dishwasher, so use some hot water to get it clean. Again, you can use a little detergent. And why, if you haven't brought a toothbrush holder in a while, you might want to think about one of those where the top pops off so it's easier to clean. The trash can. You may or may not line your trash cans. Even if you do, make sure you're cleaning these suckers. Again, I love the back porch for this because I can wear old clothes, get soaked, and not worry about it. I love letting things air out in the sun. 
just take a little bit of dishwashing liquid, pour it in there, scrub. I'm a fan of filling it up. I like to let things sit. It usually makes my scrub time easier. And it's really simple, but make sure you're doing those on a regular basis. And finally, number 15 for today, the shower curtain and liner. We have only one shower curtain, and you may not have any in your home. I know the newer homes have the glass shower doors, and they don't need a curtain. First, you'll want to get the mildew stains off. I found quite a few suggestions on this. Most recommend pre-treating. You can use vinegar for this, then you can wash it in the laundry using a gentle laundry detergent or vinegar and baking soda, or by hand with baking soda and a microfiber cloth. Mildew is the biggest thing you want to worry about. I'm a huge fan of Tylex, the realtor recommended it. I've tried Borax, I've tried a bunch of different things in the bathroom, and Tylex worked. I probably don't know, want to know what's in it, but it was amazing after months trying about 50,000 different things, the Tylex works. I have a great book called Clean and Green by Annie Berthold Vaughn. I don't know if it's still in print, but it has lots of natural suggestions for getting rid of stains and how to clean things. Of course, you can find anything on YouTube or Google if you want to be green in your cleaning or use something like essential oils. Just make sure you do your research first. I always like to be green, but for instance, with the mildew, I needed to find something tough to get out the stains. Also, check out past episodes from the fall. Check out in September, October. I've done other fall cleaning episodes if you're looking for more details for doing your fall cleaning. Take actions from today's podcast. Make a list of all those things you forget to clean. Think if there are any other items you may be missing. Add these to the list to your fall cleaning calendar. Clean the items. Keep a master fall cleaning list. On next month's episode, we're talking about empowerment. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1 p.m.